Hello, everybody. Welcome Hello. back. Uh, this is a bite-sized Thursday, a subsidiary, subsidiary. of uh, Slate Media. Uh, we're go we are concluding our watch through of the contemporary Sherlock with Benedict Cumberbund and Michael Freeman. <laughs> I said that so many different ways wrong. Yeah, you did. <laughs> Benedict Cumberbatch and Martin Freeman. <laughs> Yep. Oh, it's been a long week. I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway, uh, today we are going to go back and watch the unaired pilot as a part of our, uh, as a part of our, um, to wrap up our Sherlock yeah. bite sized. Then we're going to give our give our opinion on that, uh, and then we're going to give us some final thoughts. So, like Jared, did you? I mean, obviously you knew the Sherlock thing. Did you? Know that this unaired pilot was a thing when we started watching through this? Yes, only because I went to IMDb to go episode by episode in case, you know, someone in the cast of an episode were watching, like, who is that? So I always had it pulled up, and, you know, episode zero says unaired pilot, but it said it's, it was like the same premise as the first one, so I, okay. And then I did research beforehand just to see, and it, it, it is a 50 or 60 minute episode typical length of an hour long thing you'd expect that they re rewrote expanded and then reshot the whole thing to be 90 minutes long and which resulted in a study in pink as we know it that we started this bite size on i will say being the one of us that is more sherlocked than the other um i did not know that this existed until i bought that box set um I can't imagine what it's going to look like. Um, yeah, it'll be interesting. As a more, uh, I'm going to say Americanized thing, because i got to believe that the pacing is really what changes. That's my guess, too. Yeah. Just more normal TV is probably what we'll get. Instead of a 90-minute, basically, movie, we, we'd be getting just an episode. Yeah. So I don't know how to feel about that, especially since Studying Pink really hooked me the first time. Yeah. Not only when we watched it this time but the first time I ever watched it so um, who knows yeah I really don't know I'm not even sure I really remember the episode in its final product it's, it's, you know, it's been a it's while it's been a while uh, anything else you want to say well, let's get into the All unaired right, pilot well, if you want to watch along with us it is available on YouTube it's also available on that box set we'll be back in a second or two so Let's take a bite. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. That was a, a study. Well, unaired pilot. Yeah, that was unaired pilot, which is called a study in pink at the beginning mm -hmm. in those ugly, ugly, ugly credits. <laughs> I'm pretty sure rough. I could make something better than that in After Effects. Yeah, of course, this was 14 years ago. So well, yeah, it's fair. That's fair, that's fair, that's fair. I did not expect... when You see, you hear that they reshot the entire mm -hmm. thing. You just don't expect it, though. Like, they reshot the end, entire thing. Like, the entire end sequence is different. Like, to the point where I would suspect that they hired a new cinematographer, for crying out loud. Like, it's just... Angles are different. Lighting is to everything. It's so surreal. Yeah, and the... Things take place in different locations. Right away, we noticed it because uh, 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 when uh, Watson is walking and meets up with Stamford, his old friend, in the uh, the actual the, the actual episode, they're on like a campus of some sort, like a college campus or like a hospital camp, like some or housing complex. Something runs into him and they have a discussion on a nearby bench. Whereas in this one, they meet up on, like, the streets of London and they meet up in a restaurant. And then they go meet Sherlock in, like, a computer lab where he's checking email instead of, you know, a science lab where Mole is and he's using the microscope. Which we still did get some of that science yep. lab with Mole. We still got the lipstick thing and the coffee remark, which is still funny. <laughs> yeah, I, I think Mole. a lot of the spirit of the writing is still there, but I think a lot... I think a lot of the script changes in speaking in that vein. The only 
sort of thing that we get towards Minecraft in this episode is that email. Yeah, it's the only thing we get in in the uh, final pilot. I mean, there's a whole subplot. There's the joke with the the pretty girl in the limo, and you remember that? I think so. Yeah, and she keeps popping up in all the episodes. Yep, and then uh, the chase. Oh yeah, yeah where I I yeah. can I can do without the chase though. Yeah. I, one thing that they definitely cut. I feel like, um, I feel like in the final one we get like there's a murder. There's a pause for development. There's another murder. There's a pause for development, and then we go through the chase to the end. This one, I feel like, like I like we said, it's mostly the pacing that gets changed. This one, I feel like we get the murder, we get a little bit of a pause, and then it's just right into the. Because I remember the whole thing with Antonio. Is that his name? Angelo. Angelo. Um, they do that, but when they leave. They chase after the wrong cab. Yeah. And that's that yeah. whole chase sequence, right? Yep. And the, the whole purpose is to get John to leave his cane behind and prove that it was psychosomatic, his limp is. And I think I like this better. Because for, it gets right to it. It's a call to action to, the, to Sherlock's defense, whereas the other one is Sherlock just gets up and runs and he follows him. Yeah. And I think I mentioned it in that episode, like, it felt a little anticlimactic. Where he kind of just gets up and runs with him, like, what are we chasing? And it's like, yes, I get it. But in this one where it's like, something's wrong. And he's like, and like no, it's part of the plan. And he's like, no, no, if this plan's gone bad. And he gets up and runs to to, yeah. to save him. And I'm like, th- I think that's stronger. But I bet you what happened is, so they shot the whole thing, realized we want this to be longer. And the, the advantages of remaking it, as with anything you rewrite, is you tweak things to get better. And when you add stuff, like the pacing gets better, and the characters get better, and you can change things. The performances can add and subtract mm-hmm. and change things, and that's why this was kind of a really good uh, rehearsal. Because when yeah. you get that first episode, they're already in character, and it's because they already shot it. Before. Well, I mean, like like we said, we noticed Sherlock at least, at the very least, um, Benedict Cumberbatch's performance of Sherlock is deeper and sharper in the final version as opposed to this where it kind of sounds like a little kid. He plays it more like a psychopath in the real one. In this one, he just plays it like some goofy dude. Yeah. Like, I think they more really like, amped may, up Maybe more like what you would expect from Sherlock. Yeah. Um, I will say, um, if you haven't seen this, uh, we're going to go ahead and spoil it for you if, if you haven't seen any of it. Um, the final sequence is very different. Very, very different. Yep. Um, I would say this one, because of how it works with the, he thinks he's drunk, to then he drugs him or tranquilizes him or whatever you want to call that, throws him in the cab, brings him back to uh, Baker Street. Yep. Um, I almost called it Downing Street. That is not right. <laughs> That's, what is that? Like is what show? Buckingham Palace on That's it. Downing yeah. Street. I thought there was a show on it also there, but maybe I'm thinking. Uh, you're thinking of Down, Downton Abbey. That's it. Yep. Um. But uh, instead of that, I think the way they played out in the final one, um, be, well, because the way they played out in the final one versus the way they played out here in the final cut, Sherlock feels more in control. And I think they wanted to maintain that sort of he's smarter than everybody in the room. And I and I think that's undermined by the way they shot it here. Yeah. Well, and when he, he's he's recovering from being drugged. So he's not all there. So yeah, it takes he, some of that. He wasn't, he wasn't drugged in the final no, one, was he? I don't he, they think They just went so. to that building and he waited he for him He found him there. He's waiting for him. Yeah. So he's in control of all of his senses. Where in this one, when he's all loopy, it's like, well, of course he can't make a decision well. well and it, it, looked like he was, it looked like he was starting to cry, too. Also, yeah. the pills look much more intimidating in the <laughs> final. Yeah, and then we... I think I'll... I kind of like following Watson up to where he shoots him instead of just just being instead a, of it just being a random reveal. At yeah, the end of it. I think that's that's better. And then because you know what's going to happen and the suspense is there. And also, there's a little moment from the real one where when the guy's he doesn't die right away and he Sherlock is like begging him to tell him the answer and he doesn't tell him that that that's what ruins it. And I think don't they also allude to Moriarty? Kind of. I think so. And. I think Watson even says to him, like, there's a 
you almost you know you almost died and there's a dead man here and Sherlock's is too wrapped up and he doesn't know the answer. Yeah, which I can relate which, to. I think which which plays about. into that psychopath thing a little bit more. Yep. I think. And uh, Th- this yeah. this feels more like a laissez faire sort of bland version of it. It's much more pedestrian. Yeah, it's a good way. It's not bad. It's good. It's good characters. It's fun. It's just it, much it, more it's what well, you would. It's, it's well much paced. more what you would expect. Yeah, it's much more typical, much more orthodox, and with the ninety minute version, you get more room for character because I think I said. Most episodes, at least for the first two series, it's the the mystery of it is throughout, but the other half of it is a story about the characters that's happening. In this one, it's their introduction and living together and getting to know them. And you know, in other ones, it's other things like him coming back or you know Watson getting him married. Coming back again. Yep. So that's why <laughs> when we're not when you talk about those pauses, it's really it's the ebbs and flows of here we're doing a chunk of the mystery then we're doing you know a scenes between characters then we go back to the mystery yeah. where we, you know it's kind of like a way i think i said this to you off camera but i it feels like if this is what they originally went to the network with to sell it it feels like they asked for more episodes yeah and then they got told no or they liked it and said we need this to be sharper and then when they rewrote it they rewrote it to be longer and so then the more episodes became less necessary or less feasible yeah yeah I could see that It, I think we've mentioned multiple times throughout like so much happens off screen between episodes mm-hmm. that it's kind of a shame because I kind of want to see some of that not all of it just you want we, Sherlock to be a little bit more slice of life a little bit I think it's because First episode is Watson like impressed by him and getting to know him and like agreeing to be like okay I'm gonna I'm living with this guy and I'm gonna kind of be his partner in crime, and then by the second episode he's already rolling his eyes at him. It's like mm. that's so quick, because to them it's normal, but to us it's the next episode, and that's what happens when you only have three episodes of series. Mm-hmm. You just don't get that time with them in chunks, you know, in events of their life. It's all one big event at a time. Mm. I think another thing that we commented on or you commented on that I don't think that we have touched here is this in this version because there's not I don't, I don't know why I feel like it's because there's not enough room but it is really much more obvious Sherlock's deducting process is a lot more assumptions in this yep. than in the final version. I don't know if that is because there's there's much more space for it to be explored so it doesn't feel like a, an assumption or it's just a difference in the way uh, Cumberbatch plays it. Yeah, one of them I remember thinking is like the scratches around the charging port. I think it's in both. It's I don't like, think they, that's such a big assumption. I think it is, yeah. Hmm. And it's like, yeah, I mean, when I'd plug in my phone, I'd miss all the time. I have unsteady hands. So you, if you made that such a way, like, I don't even drink. And, and so it's like, would you d- would you deduce without knowing that I'm I'm an alcoholic because I have a bunch of scratches around my port? I totally would. See what I mean? <laughs> it's just, it's like, that is a huge assumption. It's fair. And that's, that's, I think that's what people have talked about. For deduction, just in general, it's, it's practical, but it's flawed. It it works sometimes. It works for the show. And it works for the show fine, but when you really think about it, it's like, yeah, this is mostly guessing. And if you get one detail wrong, you're completely wrong. Also, I think that um, the show is added to by the little after effects, like texting things that they do. And this, this didn't have any of yeah, them. Yeah, and the transitions. Less the transitions, more the... The text on screen, all the little different, you know, I, I call them after effects things that they do, but and they kind of do the deduction thing where, where when he dis- he explains how he knows, they kind of do like the close ups and the, the movements and the quick cuts, like all that. It's there. It's just not. It's only there once or twice. Yeah. And again, if this is what they're using to sell to a network, makes sense. 
it feels like a troupe of actors filmed a stage performance almost to get the show made. Yeah, yeah. I could I could it's it's just kind of what it feels like. Like they were never intending on airing this and Yeah. Yeah, it's like this is what we want and then it was planned, oh let's completely remake it and the skeleton's there, but we tweak it enough to make it better. I, I'd buy that. I think that's what it is. And the result that we got is great. It's a great first episode. Mm-hmm. And I mean, you both versions here, of it, both versions yeah. of it are pretty great. I was gonna say you can see see it here. It's just not fully realized. Yeah. And it's not like it's half realized. Like if they would have released this instead, and this is the show we got, it'd still be good. But it, did, but it's, it'd be, it's the, at least the start of the show is great because of where it went. Mm-hmm. Um. Obviously, this wasn't like a first draft situation, but it's surprising that, you know, they got a script like this and it is that good, but also is very much a kind of a first draft of that specific thing. Yeah. It's just, it's kind of, it's different because it was filmed probably right after, like when they refilmed. But how about like directors that have remade their own movies in film history how this doesn't mean the second version is always better but there are changes they make because there are lessons they've learned when you say remade do you mean like years and years down the road sort of like a um like a evil dead one and two sort of thing no because that's only a couple years is it really it's not that long i'm talking like like hitchcock remade the man who knew too much oh okay yeah yeah and i think there's another one that had a different title too but man who knew too much is like 35 and 56 Something like that. One is like black and white British because he was still making films in Britain, and then the rem and then Ed doesn't have a giant star in it, and it's like ninety minutes. And then he remade it in the fifties with Jimmy Stewart and Doris Day. It's in color. It's Hollywood. It's much more touched up. You know, it's a lot bigger. It's got the big song, the Kesara Sara song. Like, but I think both, and it's longer, and both do a good job of telling the story. There are many differences, and they complement each other. It's not a shot-for-shot shot remake, and you can tell he's learned learned lessons in story and filmmaking, but that old one is still good. Hmm. And then, like, uh, Cecil B. DeMille's examples are <coughs> him remaking silent films, which makes sense why. Like, uh, he... Uh, I think the, it's just the Ten Commandments is the one he remade. Yeah, because he, I think he made the original Ben Hur, but he didn't make the remake. I think that's him on the original Ben Hur. I haven't shit. I, it might not be. I know for sure Ten Commandments he remade, like twenty, thirty years, thirty years later. Something like that. So and again, like you, the Sin Color has sound. Certain filmmaking lessons you learn, like. Who's the big actor in Ten Commandments. Charlton Heston. Yep. There There's a lot of big actors, but he's Moses. Yes. The third example, real quick, is a, uh, Michel Haneke, the, I believe he's Austrian, uh, remade Funny Games, because he made, and it's a weird thing of like, he made it in the late 90s in his own language or French or something. It's been a while. And then he remade it as an American movie in like 2009 with Naomi Watts and Tim Roth and I've heard people say they like the remake better, but both. I've only seen the the original, but another I mean, thing uh, is like he change he tweaks certain things that people say they like better, but then certain people like the original better. Man, it's they complement each other, and there's differences in them, and this is different because this is it would be this is them refilming it, like and, within the year. And probably. it's a TV show, and it's a show, and it's you know there's not much time passing. and it's not like you're learning too many lessons, but you can tell okay. When they rewrote this, they knew they knew what they wanted. They probably they re-storyboarded it probably. Mm. So it's like here we can make this longer. We can go more into this, and we can change locations here, and we could bring it back to Baker Street. That could have been a budget thing. But then, like changing the opening thing from them both in the you know walking outside and sitting on the bench to the streets of London, then a restaurant that's adding a location. But so yeah. no, it's taking away a location. From the from the first one to the second one. I was saying how it's funny that I was saying they add the location for the ending because they can they can add more locations. But it's funny how at the beginning there is that first conversation with Watson Stanford. There are two locations, and in this one, it's it's one. 
because they meet and then they're talking on the bench in the same area. Whereas in okay. this first okay. one, they go from the streets of London to a restaurant. Okay. And then of course it's oh instead of having the conversation here and having the scene with Molle in in the lab, they combined them, and that that's an example of we're getting rid of fluff and then ex- we're expanding parts that can have more character interaction and plus the whole Minecraft thing is like a whole added layer to it yeah. and that kind of gives Watson more to do because he's out of this episode for a good bit he runs after him and we don't see him for like 15 minutes which in this is a lot longer because in the other one it's it's one really long night of Sherlock leaves him and then he, he gets he yeah. runs into well, and, Minecraft and like we said the whole final sequence is just way more Stressful. Yeah, because and he, is, he has a gun too. Yeah. Because in this one, it's like the phone's ringing, and he's like, "It's the police." He's like, "I know, I'm not blind." And he's, it's like, "Well, what if I don't take it? Then I have to shove it down your throat." And it's like, "Yes, he's drugged, so he could do that." But also, it's like he's also an old man. Do you think he could overpower it's, Sherlock? It's more of a, that's a what if. It's not a certainty. If that's he has, fair. if he has a weapon there, yeah, that's like a you have to do this. And then I think in the original he said, "But I know you want to." You mm-hmm. want to play this game. And I like how it presents it as, like, him solving cases is basically using. Because hmm. he g- gets off on it. Yeah. 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 Any other thoughts to say on the unaired it's, pilot? I just think I've got everything. It's, yeah. you know, it's, it is kind of a, not a, not a first draft, but a draft before the final yeah, draft. Yeah, yeah. A, a rough draft. draft. It's a penultimate draft. That's a fancy word for that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it's not like a first draft, or I don't even know if I, because rough draft, I know that counts as it, but rough draft, when I think of it, always feels like first draft. It also would imply that they intended on remaking it originally, and if you intended on doing that, then you know. Yeah. Looking at this thing, it says the BBC decided. So I bet you what they had, BB, the BBC said, if we like this, make it longer. And it can be more of events than having a bunch of episodes just have a couple, which British TV is notorious for having very short seasons. Mm-hmm. Huh? So. so, I mean, this is, our, uh, this is our final episode of Sherlock. We usually do a couple wrapping thoughts, just give our overall thoughts on the series. You know, I feel like we've made it pretty clear we really like the series I mean even where people say they've fallen off because various reasons series 2 or series 3 Three or whatever three. like I I didn't sense the fall off that much I felt season 4 is it's not even that bad like when you talk about fall off though you think like I don't know what's what's a show that really got garbage like X-Files X-Fi- I was going to say X-Files but like I didn't feel that like it's Small not it's bill. you haven't gotten to there you nope. don't know yet <laughs> but everyone you don't it to know me. yet yeah but anyway you don't know anything about Smallville until you get into it so I know anyway I'm trying to think if there's another show example well like people say jump the shark we probably brought it up in this series and a lot of people say like Happy Days kind of did fall it's still popular but it just didn't, it got sillier don't people say that about Family Matters too. when Urkel got, like, a thing that made him cool and sexy. Maybe, maybe there's a jumping the shark moment. I'm not sure, but I know people say, like, you watch an episode from season one, and it's a grounded sitcom about a Chicago family with their, you know, freaky neighbor. You know, like, their goofy little neighbor. And then you watch, like, a season, what, nine or whatever the last get, season is. Is he even and in the first season? Mm-hmm. He first comes in like the fourth episode or something. Huh. He's not even there at the start. But then he became so popular. Yeah. Similar to Fonzie, the show revolved around him. And but you, you watch a last season episode and it's like he goes to space or he builds a robot. or like It just got weird. Cause it's, it isn't what kind of like slice of life relatable problems can this family go through and connect to each other with. It became, what's the only thing is Steve doing this week? <laughs> Just like Happy Days, instead of grounded family in, the, I believe, the 60s. How 50s many or 60s. sharks is the Fonz yeah. going to jump it's, over it's, this week? It's more of what's Fonzie up to this week. Instead of being the charming, 
so, you know, supporting character that is friends with the main character, he became the main character because he was popular. I'm trying to think of another show that did that and has like a hard line for it. There's got to be plenty. I'm oh, just... I'm sure there's plenty. I'm sure anybody could point to any sitcom ever and say that. Yeah. Um, Not every sitcom. There's plenty of sitcoms that are just consistently good. Yeah. A lot of people say that about Scrubs, but I disagree. I people say know. it about Smallville. Um, <laughs> a lot of people say it about a lot of the CW shows. <laughs> It hits that certain point where it just it's kind of outlived what it should have been, and mm-hmm. it just keeps going because it's popular. X Files is obviously another one, and that lost it went, lost is another one, and it's basically any show that has a gimmick. Eventually, the yeah. gimmick runs out. Lost is a weird one though because so many people have so many different ideas of when the show falls off. I don't think the show falls off. I think the show just is just season to season changes, and by the time you reach the end. It's just it's I would I, di- I did different. I did not dig season three like a lot of people do. Like a lot of people really love that season three, and I don't. And then four was the short season, right? That's the writer strikes, and that's it, my favorite. I can never remember whether it's four or five. Is not not Penny's boat is my favorite. Four is the end of three is the not Penny's boat thing. It's the yeah. last episode to lead into four, and then the the season I don't like is two. See, I like to. Because we sit in one space over and over and (laughs) over and over. And it's like 10 episodes, sure. This is like 25 episodes. It's Oh, it's so boring. (laughs) And when you do flashback episodes every episode, because that's their gimmick, and you have... It's like, okay, these characters don't have much more to flash back to. That's important, because we did all that last season. Now we have new characters we're flashing back to that we don't care about. And they're sitting in the hatch. All season. Got to push that button. I also think that Lost kind of shot themselves in the foot because they were never going to answer all of the mysteries that they posed. Or if they did, it was underwhelming. They built... The mystery of it was too big for whatever answer there was. Like, I I still really don't even know what the smoke monster was. I think it's explained, but I don't remember. I saw it. I finished it like 15 years ago. It's it's like the... Or not 15 years ago. It's like the the security system of the island... But also like the spirit. Lost spoilers, by the way. But also like the spirit form of the Dark Jacob, the Man in Black. Yes, I don't remember yeah, his it's, name. It's like Isaiah or something like that. Something, but it. That's the other thing. They get into the lore and it gets confusing, and then you're having all the different gimmicks with the narrative, and it's like, yeah, it's confusing. I liked it still. I liked. I enjoyed the last it. Episode. I want to watch it again. Yeah, that'd be fun. Back to Sherlock. Sherlock. Uh, the, the falling off point for most people is he survived, which is in the last shot of series two. I, I, and so they're wondering for two years, li- I know, think, like, I how think did he survive? The falling and they off don't. point is they don't give a firm answer. And yep, they watching it, they, like, I'm going to say binging it like we did because we kind of did binge it. Um, It doesn't feel as icky. Heavy. Yeah, or icky. Yeah, it's a, it's a great yeah, scene. Maybe it's then, because yeah. I've seen it before. Yeah. But it's a great scene in two when he does that, and there's weight to it. And then when the reveal at the end of the episode, I don't like. Mm. I know they have to Can do. Can you that, imagine but. if they'd have just left people for two years, thinking that Sherlock was dead? I know. Or I feel like there might be a smarter way to hint at that he's there, but you don't see him. Or all of them. Where you just like see a reflection move across his gravestone or something. Something. Like but uh the episode is the episode I remember being good, but that that part of it was annoying. Because I remember we watched it, we go, I don't get why people don't like series three, this was a good episode. And then we watch the sign of three and it's like, This is great. And then you watch his last vow and you're like, This is also great. Why do people not like this? And then you get to the fourth series and you start to get it. Mm. What'd you say? It's when a Moffat thinks he's smart. When and that's a Doctor Who start, carryover. When he starts writing like he's smarter than the audience. Yeah, and that, that which, is o- it, which is okay for your character to be smarter than the audience, I think. But it's a fine line between arrogance and plot device. 
And that, that the six Thatchers episode was that was really the worst episode of the fourth season. It was the first no, one, wasn't no, it? Yeah, that was not the worst one. Last week's episode was the worst one. The final. Oh, the probably. final one. Yeah. Oh, the first one ended. Yeah, okay. We were both like, yeah, that wasn't great. There are good parts, and then the second one with Lars Mikkelsen is great. It's fun. It was like, yeah, this feels like Sherlock again. The second one doesn't have Lars Mikkelsen. The second episode of the fourth series, yeah. No, he's the he's the Mind Palace guy, isn't it? He's the end of the third series. Yes, I thought he was the. I thought he was in that that middle episode of the fourth series. Uh. Uh-uh. That's right, man. What's the middle episode? The middle episode is where we find out that the therapist of John. That's the one we have where oh, okay, yeah. Mary makes them reconcile via the, the 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 tape thingy, and then they undermine that what is a fairly powerful moment by having That's the tape continue. Vowel. Okay, his last vow was with Lars Mikkelsen. <laughs> it almost feels oh, like okay. Yeah, it's the business guy. It's the, yeah, it's the Toby Jones yeah, business yeah, yeah. guy one, which that was I, creepy. I think they said. It's not a great episode comparatively, but he is a great antagonist. Mm-hmm. And it's interesting, and there was, like, structure stuff. It's been a couple of weeks. That, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I completely mixed up where the order is. His last file was I mean, it's Mars easy Mikkelsen. to do. There's not that many of them. Yeah. And people don't like The Abominable Bride. And I, we really I really did. liked The Abominable I think Bride. people wanted either answers going between three and four, or they wanted... Like a movie, movie, and it's not. It's a special. It's supposed to, and I think people I've seen, their reactions are like, this just felt like build up to series four. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's what it is. Yeah. They're like, and then it flashes back, and it makes it seem like they're so cool and, and meta and smart, and it's like, no, nah, it makes sense. Know. It makes sense why it's all happening. I, like, I, liked, I liked it. I liked it because the characters got to play different characters. I always like when they do that in shows, like, Shows that are not typically like musical shows that have like a musical episode. That's so many shows now that have that well, musical episode. I'm talking about back like w- the Flash. That was a good episode, right? Did they have a musical? Episode? Yeah, the villain that makes everyone sing everything, and I heard it was awful. I don't remember that probably because I blocked it out. I'm specifically referencing Scrubs. Scrubs. Specifically, <laughs> bumper buddies. I love that. Scene. That's the problem I love that with show. That's the problem with music-based episodes. It all hinges on how good the music and lyrics are. Yeah, but you know, and everyone says the Scrubs one. Yeah, I've heard it. It's really good. And then everything I hear about that Flash one is really bad. <laughs> so again, it matters who you get to write those songs. Well, I mean, Bill Lawrence is just a good writer to begin with. If he wrote the songs, I would guess he had a heavy hand in it. <laughs> Sarah, Jockey, from what I hear, can't sing, but, you know. That's another thing. If your actors can't sing, then they have problems. Well, too. regardless, I just like episodes where actors can play their characters, but differently. So you like, it's not quite that. The TNG episodes, are they're on the holodeck for most of the episode. Holodeck or, episodes. Or like, there's a whole noir episode of Smallville that I really love. Um... The 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 black and white noir fairly odd parents episode where at the end Jorgen's like why is this fairy covered in chocolate and why is the corner of the room still black and white? <laughs> yes, that gotcha. type of stuff. I just do I you like that. dream episodes where not the there's a twist that it's a dream necessarily but you know the whole episode is with like they go into someone's dream those kind where the whole thing is a fantasy that you're aware of. Yeah. Again, you like gimmick episodes, then. They're fun. But the problem that I think I we like come them. to now is everything is a gimmick episode I for like, shows because we have less episodes, and that's where we come back to the filler argument. I like when it's a gimmick episode within a constructed yep. show. Again, that's why it's a gimmick episode. But because everything's so much shorter now, the gimmick episodes, which technically are filler, usually... Are every episode, because every episode has its gimmick, so then you don't have anything consistent. And that's the whole thing of, like, I don't want 
20 some episode drama shows again that's too long but then now everything's so short you don't get time spent it's i don't know where is the happy middle <laughs> on, on the flip side of that i would not have accepted a christmas special from attack on titan that would have been weird <laughs> it probably would have made me laugh though <laughs> one of those big yeah. titans is running like this in a santa hat <laughs> There's hardly any filler in that show. There's none. There's absolutely none. Yeah. It's because I think... Don't quote me on this. I don't know. But I believe that they waited until the person that wrote it was in like the last chapters of it before they started the anime. Makes sense. Yeah. But yeah, Sherlock, back to the jumping off point, I think it is... The, the faux death and the not getting an answer. I, th- I think it's the underwhelming nature of the fact that they made it a joke. Yep, and it's they like... They don't play it well like it's a joke. No. So if, like, you're watching that expecting, like, a real answer, it's not told to you very well like it's a joke, and then... I don't know, it just... It's a, it's a very meta joke. That's what it is. It's a meta joke, because they never say it's a joke in the thing. Yeah. And then, it, but then you have two of my favorite episodes of the whole show right after it. It's fair. And then series four is a rough start. And then the middle is good. And then the end is a big I still don't know how she shot him and he got away with it. I just, they say it in that third one, but it's just in amongst a ball of garbage that you just can't. Yeah. As of recording this, there have been little mumblings of, uh, Sherlock Return. It's because there's that new uh, Netflix show. I think it's Netflix with Cumberbatch called Eric. Again, as of recording this, this is new. And they asked him in interviews, like, will there be any kind of Sherlock Return? And he said, I think he said something to the to the likes of, I wouldn't announce that here, but you never know what the future brings. Something like that. So, I have a feeling if if the stars align, there could be... I don't know about another series, or if it's a movie, or a special... But I think he and Martin Freeman could return to the characters another time. I'd accept a movie. Yeah. I think... And this is the case with any me- media over the years. When an ending is unfulfilling, or divisive, or hated... You give it time, and then you return to it. Because now that you, you know, you've le- lessons learned, they're older, and you can just like, let's, let's go out better. Now we don't have the... All the anticipation and the that is the absolutely that is absolutely false. What? They haven't returned to Lost. Nobody liked that at the time it came out. Yeah, I didn't say every time. They haven't returned to How I Met Your Mother. Yeah, they did. They made a second that, show and it failed. And yep, it has. So that's why they to, stopped. And it has. I didn't say every show. I said there are examples of when there's time pass when something is like that. You can go back and. Ch- try to fix it and it doesn't always work out but when they do it like Frasier no it ended well and the new show is okay mm. it's not as good because Niles isn't there because a lot of things <laughs> fair yeah that one's different too because that's a spin uh, it's a spin off of a spin off that's true so it's like that's that's different I'm just talking could about could we get th- a Sherlock spin off where Molly is Molly. the star yeah, I'd watch that. I'd watch it, too. That'd be fun. Heck, I'd watch it if where Molly plays the dude again from the um, Abominable Bride. Yeah. That'd be fun. I, I was just saying, like, a big example of the whole, like, it ends kind of unceremoniously and they go back to Twin Peaks. They got canceled. Then they made a movie that was divisive at the time, and then he got to make that third season and end it. Yeah. Like that's a big example of just time passes and you get, not that any of it's ever. And well, Twin Peaks is kind of a super niche thing. Maybe super, not super niche. I don't know if I'd say super niche. It was very popular when it was I on. Just, I, from the little bit of it that I've seen, it just doesn't seem. It was a huge ratings, mon- rating mon- ratings monster and changed TV. And then it got canceled because viewership dropped off because they solved the mystery before the end of the show. <laughs> because they, That's right. Didn't they solve it at like the end of the second season and there's still like a third season or something like that? No. The first season is like eight episodes. 
and uh, I guess CBS ordered another season wanted like 20 some episodes and David Lynch and Mark Frost I think it's Mark Frost said no <laughs> CBS said too bad so David Lynch in like episode like 8 or 9 finished the, the mystery or that like like solved it and there's still like 13 more episodes and then he just went off and made Wild at Heart or was that before I don't remember what he was doing. I have my timeline off. He went off and did his own things. And the show, you know, they were making, like, all these filler episodes that are bad. There's, like, a stretch of episodes that are bad. And then he comes back, and they build, build up the supernatural lore of the world, and then it got canceled. <laughs> Funny. Then they made the movie, which is a prequel. You think they'll ever make that community movie? They, they are making the community movie. They are? Yeah. That's in, like, legit production now? I think so, or close. They said they were waiting for Donald Glover to be on board, and he is on board now or something. Nice. So that's going to be a thing. Is that a movie? At least it is right now. Back to, back to Sherlock, I, though. I, I could see them returning because, because it ended like that, and they don't have the deadline and the pressures to end it as big, and there's been time passed. I think they have a chance to do something cool. And or at least interesting. Maybe Moffat has been humbled by all this. Yeah, just I think they, if given the, the freedom and budget, I think they could give us something really good. I mean, it's Martin Freeman and Benedict Cumberbatch, and as much as I joke about his writing, Stephen Moffat, he's a great writer. He's written some of the most iconic episodes of Doctor Who, and and this too. So, and let's not forget Mark Gaddis, because because. I feel like we never mention him when we talk about writing and show running and this. And he deserves that. Yeah. Yeah. It is, overall, like, despite it being, you know, not consistently good through its whole run, it's really good. Uh, yeah. I would say for the first three seasons, it's pretty consistently. Yeah. It's that fourth season. that Sa- just, Sandwiched yeah. bad episode. Sandwiched bad episode. And then three good episodes. Uh, series three is my favorite. What about yours? Do you have a favorite of the three? I still want to say um, Series 1. Just Not that, that I don't like the other ones. It's just that's the one that... That's kind of a little bit of That's just the one that sticks in my head. Study in Pink is really the thing that sticks in my head. Yeah, it's it's good. Just, it's a good show. It, it It's really the thing that sticks in my head as me consciously thinking... TV can be smart. Whoa. And, it's be, and that is your favorite episode, you think, is the first I, one? I think so. Yeah, and I told you I really name. like the study of the problem of three. The sign, the sign of three. The sign of three. Much better than I did when it first aired. Yeah, that one or the one after it are my favorite. I don't know which one is his last vow. They're both really good. Isn't his last vow the... That's Lars. That's Lars and uh, the Mine Castle, or and w- well, when Watson's wife Mary being a former agent. That's right. Like, I just I really like those shows. The Sign of Three especially gave us some of the most human Sherlock moments, and it got me a little, oh, you know, and it had uh, everything came together really well. Like I just, it's just so much fun. Hmm? Yeah. That belt was keeping him alive. Yep. Anyway, got anything else? Nope, that's a, I think that's a wrap on Sherlock. Yeah. Yeah. What was so, that? The 14th, this is like 14th week I don't of, know. of this bite size? I don't know, because we kept looking at the IMDB list, and it had a different number of episodes than what we counted on the box because of the webisodes. The webisode and, and Abominable Bride. Yeah. Well, and the unaired pilot. Yeah, so I think it was... There's 12 episodes, technically, one special, one mini-episode that we combined, and then and then the unaired pilot, because many happy I returns. thought there was two mini-episodes. I think it's only one. Regardless, that was Sherlock, everybody. We hope you liked it as much as we did. Yeah. Um, next week, we'll be back with something, I think. Yeah, we you'll see know, next week. We don't know what yet, but uh, we'll keep you posted. Until then, you can... Check us out on all the social medias. And Jared, where are the social medias? You can uh, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, the funny TikTok, and X. Formerly known as Twitter. 
And you can uh, listen to us on Apple, Google Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and hey, if it's YouTube, like, subscribe, comment, ring our bell. Make sure you like us and comment on all those apps. And uh, check out our Groovy website. And as this is the last mystery that we will have solved and probably will be solving for the foreseeable future, um, head on over and check out our probably what is now, uh, I don't know where we're at now, but well, we currently have another series phased out running. Um, that's our main Tuesday yep, show. That'll continue um, throughout the year. And then we'll start back up with some more bite size pretty soon here. Other than that, have a great day. Take a bite. Oh. <laughs>